Hiya, uh, it's Mal Deakin from Hammond Organ and what we're going to show you on this particular piece of footage is the differences between the original New B3 and New B3 Mark II, which is this instrument I'm sat at now. I think a lot of you have already seen the YouTube or the Hammond Player DVD which features a section called Meet the Bee which we did a, two or three years ago and that goes in depth to what the new B3 is all about. But for this instance what I'm going to try and get across to you is what the differences are, the reason why we made these differences and what they mean to you as a musician. Um, but I'm going to backtrack a little bit for those of you who haven't seen the original Meet the Bee explanation and it's so important that you understand the heritage, the reason why the B3 has been around after all these years and still in fact not just still but even more in demand by young and old musicians in all genres of music. Um, it's gathering momentum all the time and the reason is because the B3 or the Hammond is a very tactile, expressive, unique instrument. So if we go back in time to when the original B3 or tone wheel organ was produced, um, there was a lot of really compromises the engineers had to make to make the B3 work because originally the, 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 the guy who designed it, Lawrence Hammond, was a clockmaker and an inventor. And he had this idea that he could capture precision spinning disc that would produce a sine wave which would be then picked up by a, a microphone. Early days the objective was to produce something which would really take the place of a pipe organ in a small church. So he designed this system called tone wheels. Now without going into a really lengthy explanation about what tone wheels do, basically inside a tone wheel organ there are 96 tone wheels, spinning discs, and each one has got a pickup on it and it produces a sound. The reason we have nine draw bars is because we have the pipe footages from a church. So basically if I press the 16 foot, I produce a 16 foot pipe. The 8 foot pipe would produce the note above. So to pull the two out together, I get that effect. All right, and that goes all the way up to one foot. In between that, you've got the harmonics: five and a third, two and two thirds, one and three fifths, one and one third. And obviously, they produce harmonics around the fundamental tones. What makes the Hammond organ very, very interesting, and one of the reasons why it became so successful were these little abnormalities, which were produced by this kind of tone generation system. The first one, which everyone really, is the signature sound of the Hammond, is the key click. So if you listen to the sound of a typical Hammond organ setting, a jazz or blues setting, you can hear the clicking. The, the clicking is produced by the contacts being struck because underneath here there are nine contacts. In fact, on the new B3 there are ten because this is also a MIDI instrument. The last contact is a MIDI contact. But as the note is pressed, it produces almost like a discharge, a short circuit, if you like, which produces this click sound. Now, at the time, it was a problem, but in actual fact, it's what made this thing become really, really interesting in its tonal texture and colour. So, what you've got to understand before you even approach playing a B3 is how the thing works and why it produces the sound in the way it does. So the easiest explanation I can give you of that is we've got nine draw bars, we've got nine contacts. If I only slightly press down on the key, I only produce the sound of the first draw bar here. Okay, you can hear that. And the further down I go, I bring in the other draw bars until on a full key depression, I get that sound, but on a slight key depression, I get that sound. So if you think about it, a Hammond is almost a touch-sensitive instrument. 
So when you see the guys playing it in a very sort of tactile style, it's not because that looks really good on stage or looks good on camera. It's because, depending on how you approach the instrument, the instrument will f give you back a completely different tonal colour. So if I play this thing nice and smooth, If I play it in a different technique, you can hear I'm also getting a growl on the note by, by the way I, I approach playing this. So every time you press the key on a Hammond organ, you produce a slightly different tone. And that's what playing Hammond's all about. The next element which was added into this, uh, which gave us the sort of iconic Hammond sound, if you like, uh, was the vibrato. Now, Again, on a lot of instruments of that day, the vibrato was produced by a transistor circuit, I think, uh, which just modulated the sound. So in other words, it wobbled the sound. On the Hammond, this was different. It, it actually had a mechanical scanner on it. And what that did, it added vibrato, but it also added other elements. Because it was a living, moving, mechanical thing, it actually changed the way the sound was produced. If you put the, the sound of the draw bars through the vibrato, in particular, you know, most Hammond players ask what, what which, chorus three is, is really the one which most jazz, rock, blues players uh, would use. And what happens when we put chorus three on is really interesting. Not only do we get a vibrato effect, which you will hear, but it actually fattens the sound out. It makes it a much um, sweeter sound. Now you're listening to that with the Leslie speaker on stop. And just for your reference here, the Leslie we're using in this part of the explanation about the B3 Mark II is the 3300 uh, Leslie behind me. Um, and and we, we, we cover the other Leslies later, but for the time being, what I'm gonna show you is vibrato on. When we switch the Leslie on to slow, you get the slow motion of the Leslie and the vibrato fighting against each other and producing this sort of even out of phase effect. Now that's very important because it does another thing. If we go down here, one of the sort of typical Hammond um, players of playing is, is this left hand bass groove, right? Listen what happens when I add vibrato. Right, the sound's different, yes, but listen how much more click becomes prominent. Alright, so by putting the vibrato on, you're not only changing the, the, the shape of the sound, you're actually increasing the tonal content element of the sound. And remember that that is under your control, because just like when I showed you how the nine draw bars work, the way you approach playing this will give you different kinds of groove and feel. So again, on a smooth left hand bass groove. So we're being very gentle with it. But actually, if I want to get a little bit more funky with it, if I actually start to play very staccato, I'm going to produce, first of all, a different kind of sound because I'm triggering the key context in a slightly different way. But the vibrato is giving me that extra fatness plus the key click. So a groove with a... Vibrato. You can hear the difference for yourself. So, the Hammond organ is not just a instrument which produces an electronic sound, it's an instrument which is producing an electronic sound, but the interface between you as the Hammond player and the actual sound engine, you can shape, modify in real time. And as you watch the, the, the video demos which we're going to cover across the Hammond range, you'll see that really, in real-time performance, you can get so much out of the same drawbar setting just by adding things like vibrato, changing the Leslie from slow to fast.
So the new Hammond B3 Mark II is exactly the same as the B3 Mark I. It uses the same base 3 tone generator, which again, there's a long history about how that was developed. It's a unique system patented by Hammond. Uh, and as you've read and seen on TV programs, arena stages around the world, in the press, many, if not all, of the greatest Hammond players in the world accept this as a definitive Hammond organ. It's no longer referred to as a, a digital Hammond. It's actually referred to a Hammond B3. And that covers not just the B3, but the whole of the range as we've progressed on, 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 down, down the line on, on the other videos. Right, so what's different about B3 Mark II? Okay, what we couldn't do is destroy the purity of the objective, and the purity of the objective was to produce a B3. Nothing more, nothing less, produce a B3. But several years down the line, after the launch of the original B3, players, home players, studio players, gospel players, rock players, all said, you know, wouldn't it be great if it could also. So we listened to what these people uh, asked for and the ones which we considered to be pertinent and relevant to the heritage and the purity of the B3, we looked at and we decided, okay, we can actually do things which won't destroy the, the purity of the Hammond B3, but would enhance it. So on here, we have a magic little drawer which we pull out, just like the original new B3 version. But for, for people who are familiar with the original version of the new B3, the, the screen now it looks the same, but the content is, is radically different. So for the time being, I'm going to put the, the Leslie on break, and we're just going to look at the first major uh, change. There are a lot of changes to the uh, sort of subtle changes to B3 Mark II. I, I don't want to cover them all because we'd be too long but I'm going to cover the ones which would affect 99% of players and the way they would use it uh, if you need to know everything about it obviously contact your local dealer or, or supplier uh, get the brochure talk to the guys they'll explain in depth but first and foremost I'm going to go to the draw bar parameter now on here what we've done we've we've created three basic draw bar setups now. So we have B3 type one, which is, which is that, all right? Remember you're listening to this dry now, no Leslie, Leslie is on break. Now B3 type one produces, shall we say, the average B3. It's a, it's a middle of the road B3 sound, um, which, you know, everyone's happy with. But, one or two people said, it would be really great if we could sort of recreate the classic sound of the sort of mid-60s, um, where certain B3s uh, had a lot of leakage. And leakage, just to explain, you will hear for yourself what leakage is, but to explain what leakage is all about. Because we've got all these tone wheels close together and they've all got some sort of pickup, or amplification or microphone which is which is drawing the, the, the sound off the tone wheel. Obviously the neighbor tone wheel which is produced in a different frequency can, c is still sort of spinning round so the, the, the leakage is basically the leakage of sound from one tone wheel or tone wheels to its neighbor or neighbors. So there we can hear a little bit of leakage and we'll go to B type 2 now. B type 2 I'm going to switch between the two, listen, B type 2, B type 1, 2, 1, listen to it on the law manual, type 1, type 2, B type 2 has been put in the keyboard for the, the, the people who really want to fine tune the Hammond sound. What we can also do with B-Type 2, not only did it deliver more leakage by changing to that preset, but we've also given you the ability to actually increase the leakage yourself. So now in real time, without going into any in-depth programming, I can start to press the button, and you can hear those higher frequencies, the leakage coming in. Now we're on maximum. 
This is what happens when I actually put this into a performance mode. With the Leslie and the vibrato. Now I'm going to switch to B-Type 1. Hear the difference, amazing difference. Play that phrase again, but on B-Type 2. And the only thing I've done is change from one basic preset tone wheel type to the other, all right? So B-Type 2, leakage can be adjusted. B-Type 1, it doesn't matter what you do to the parameter, it will always produce that amount of leakage. B-Type 2, you can adjust. And the third one, which everyone dismisses, and, and it's probably because of the name, on here we've got a preset called Mellow Drawbar. And people think, ah, oh, man, I don't want mellow draw bar, I want dirty draw bar. But actually, mellow draw bar is not about a soft sound. It's about reducing the leakage down to a minimum. And that's what the engineers for certain players would have done by getting in the back and fiddling with things. But mellow produces a fantastic sound for the softer Hammond player. So if you wanted to play a nice... Um, Hear the difference. If I just quickly go to B type two, hear those frequencies. And just like it should do with the original vibrato scanner, add vibrato, the leakage will increase. All right. So that's, that's point one about the new B3. Mark two is that we now have the ability in real time to change draw bar sets uh, between B type one, B type two, and mellow. Save them in a preset if you like, and you know, you, you can now have three different types of Hammond B3 sound, tonal and tactility at the touch of a preset. All right. so going back to the menu. The next thing which is a major um, change to this instrument, again, people ask for this and there are certain situations where it's not practical uh, to use a Leslie speaker or maybe for people who play at home in home studios, they haven't got the room for a Leslie speaker, or possibly another scenario is when recording Leslie's, as you can see behind me, you have to have three mics ideally that go into a desk and you've got to mess around, you know, and the only way to get the real sort of Hammond sound, the historical Hammond sound, is to do this because you, we're dealing with living, mechanical, spinning, air moving speakers. But as a lot of you may have seen and heard, on the internet or, or in for yourselves. The Leslie simulators which Hammond use in the current range is the best ever. I mean, that has been critically acclaimed around the world as the best Leslie simulator that has ever, ever, ever been produced. So B3 Mark II has the same Leslie simulator as the XK3C Pro System. And it is unbelievably good. Not only have we got a Leslie simulator inside B3 Mark II, because of the fact that we're possibly not pushing this through a valve amplifier or a solid state Leslie, uh, and we're using left and right out, we've also put inside a valve preamp. So now you've got the option of totally changing the characteristics of the sound and switching in the preamp, which has got a valve inside, a little 12AX7 valve and that will actually warm it up, produce the distortion, the overdrive effect that you want. And again, like on B3 Mark I, um, underneath the left-hand side here, I've got analog control parts. The first one is the master volume gain. The second one is a bass boost. The third one is a treble boost. Uh, the fourth one is a, a reverb control. So in real time, I can adjust the, the, the amount of reverb that I am putting into the mix. 
But at this point, I'll explain that on B3 Mark II, we've now got a spring reverb simulator in there, which everyone asked for, so it's, you can get the, the sound of like a, a Leslie 122 RV or an A100 with its internal spring reverb or indeed a Leslie with a PR40. So the, the options there have been increased as well. But now the overdrive can be switched between an overdrive simulator circuit or switching the valve in. So at the moment, I'm on zero overdrive. Now, it's hard for you to appreciate how quiet we're playing in the studio, but to get the kind of effect that you would expect from a, an overdriven rock Hammond, we now have a little pan pot where I'm gonna bring in the, the, the valve preamp and we can do this. Impressive, I think. Obviously at the moment, you're listening to that through the 3300 behind me, but in a short while, you'll see the B3 and hear the B3 through the left and right outs using the internal Leslie simulator. I'm gonna come back to that in a little while because there's just a few more things I want to explain about the new, ver the new version Mark II and its, and its facilities. Um, right, third thing which was asked for, which I can understand, is that obviously on the console model, the contemporary wooden B3, you know, it's not the sort of thing many people are going to think about moving around on a regular basis. But the B3 portable, which you've, you'll see on, on parts of the film in, in, in image shots, and you can look at it on the, the website, etc. The B3 portable is different. Now, one of the biggest issues for Hammond players is the pedal board because this kind of pedal board, the, the, the 25 note flat B3 pedal board, there's no way it can actually condense its size. So if you're traveling around as a musician, it's actually the hardest thing to fit in the back of your estate car or small van. Whereas we all know, and you can see from the pictures, the B3P can be collapsed in less than two minutes and popped into the back of an estate car. So on B3 Mark I, uh, the, the pedal boards on both the portable and the contemporary were a dedicated pedal board. On this one, on the portable version, you ha I, I must have clarified, this also has the facility, but I'm, I'm saying that most people would use it with the portable. It has the facility to use a standard MIDI pedal board now. So if you're on the road and you want to use the 20 note Hammond pedal board, for instance, um, or the 30 note pedal board, you can just use the, the MIDI in underneath and that will go straight to the two pedal draw bars and that will give you a mi an option of having a small pedal board underneath it because let's face it you know pedals are not just for playing cheesy bass lines on they're a very useful thing even in a band situation a lot of the players I work with wouldn't go out without a pedal board because it adds another element in the in the tool of the Hammond players toolbox well I'm talking about bass pedals now I'm going to go in and choose the bass pedal menu and we've put some more options in there. So now we've got normal type A, which produces that sound. No, normal type F, which produces another option to add extra harmonics into the bass. Muted, which was on B3 Mark 1. And synth, and synth 2. So you've got like a saw wave and a, a square wave synth in there as well. We can add and no click, add click, loads of click. So we put a click generator that's fully controlled on top of the pedals. And obviously you can switch between monop monophonic and polyphonic pedals, depending on what you want to do. The, what we've talking about the pedals, the other thing that we did, is if we go now to the vibrato menu and page right to the very top parameter of the vibrato menu, we've now got an option which is asked for um, of can we stop the vibrato going on to the bass pedal so we get a more precise bass sound? So, yes, we can. Right, so now its setting is great and pedal. If I change that, great only, which means basically when I put the lower vibrato on, instead of the vibrato effect automatically being put in with the pedal sound, now it's not, it's isolated. So we can get more of a, all right, back to, you can hear the modulation on the bass 
there the modulation has gone. All right. Moving on, uh, underneath here, obviously the extra in inclusion of a left and right out, which goes to a um, amplification system, and will then give you the Leslie effect. Like the XK3C Pro system, you can go inside. You can alter all the parameters of the Leslie, like the mic speed, the mic, uh, sorry, the, the, the horn speed, bass speed, mic distance, mic angle. All the parameters, dB cut on the horn, etc. Everything that you've got on the XK3C, you can now do with the simulator on the new B3. Um, also, underneath, you have a dedicated sub out or pedal out now. So you can even isolate the pedal from the, the, the mix and send it out on a separate line. So if you want to enhance or pump the bass up in the live situation or a studio situation, very, very simple to do. The last enhancement I really want to talk about is um, we all know that all Hammond organs now are MIDI um, and on V3 version Mark 1 it was MIDI and it, you know it was it was okay it was controllable it's gone much deeper now we've got on here we've got uh, basically the same kind of mapping uh, and zoning facilities that we have on the XK3 and the XK Pro system so for the guys that are working in a studio or maybe on the road with a, you know, running VST plugins or receptor or keyboard workstation, and they actually want to use the Hammond as a master control keyboard, yes, it can actually be done very, very effectively now. Uh, it's very easy to do. And in the last section of this where we switch over to the laser simulator, I'm going to pull the MacBook on top and just show you a few concepts of how you would use the B3P or the B3 Contemporary Mark II in a live performance studio situation where we're actually using key zones and key maps to produce um, basically a full ensemble production tool at your fingertips. So we're going to come back to that in a couple of minutes and I'm sure that you'll be very impressed. <laughs> Okay, so we're back, and as mentioned before, what we've just been listening to there is the B3 Mark II using its own internal Leslie simulator. Uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Absolute dream to play. Uh, really is a good feeling you get from this. And obviously, it opens up a whole new area for the use of the B3, because as we discussed earlier on, yeah, the B3 should be always paired with a Leslie 122 in an ideal situation, or maybe a Pro uh, Pro B with the 3300 Leslie, but there's, there's sometimes there are these situations where it's not practical and just not possible uh, to use a Leslie. Uh, and for the first time ever now, when you actually listen to this as a player back through the mix, you know, you go in the sound room and you actually listen to what's just come through, you think, wow, this is crazy, and you've got more control. So for a lot of the time as a musician now, you really have opened up this new door where you can walk through and take the B3 experience and sound to any scenario you're ever likely to come across. So just to go through it sort of out of a mix, um, obviously we have the very important brake model. So the brake sound is, is, is the sound of a Leslie that has stopped. And even though the Leslie's stopped, you're not listening to a straight speaker because the sound is still being compressed through the horn and the bass rotor. In other words, the sound's being shaped and modelled 
uh, even though the Les is not spinning. So the typical sound of a braked Leslie is that, okay? More sort of familiar to your ears will be the sound of brake Leslie with the vibrato, again, as we discussed earlier. Change of the sound, alter the characteristic. All right, so that's a typical sort of 60s. Now, one of the exciting things that's happened with the development of, of the new Leslie simulator, which features on the HK3C, uh, HK1 Pro system and new B3, is that it's not just a um, an afterthought. I mean, that because Leslie is such a big part of Hammond's sound, it's no use having the best technology in the world like the Hammond B3 if you're not going to have the best simulator in the world like the Leslie simulator. And the two actually go together, and things happen with Leslie's. So that when we go from break to slow, for instance, listen at the incredible separation between the horn and the bass rotor. More importantly, the spatial Doppler effect, which hits the mid-range frequencies. So I'm going to actually play a deep root F, a chord there, and, and listen what happens now. Using the foot switch on the swell pedal, I'm going to kick her into slow. Now this will amaze you. It's not just put on the Leslie effect, it's actually shaped and, and, and bled that slow motion of the Leslie horn and rotor in, as it would do if you're using a 1-2-2. Two, two. Going from slow to fast. Listen to the separation between the bass and the horn rotor, the way the two speed up and slow down at the same time are, are, and achieve maximum and, and slowest speeds at different rates. And that's all about what a Leslie should do. So here, it's still winding, but there. Okay, let's add a little bit of overdrive to that. Another thing I covered earlier, which I'm going to give you an audio example of now, was we mentioned the new reverb um, parameters or the enhanced reverb parameters. So now I'm going to the reverb section and I'm going to change. This is the hall reverb type. So if you wanted to play as though you're in a big sort of concert hall with a big ethereal type Hammond sound. <laughs> Actually, we don't want that. What we want to try and achieve is a Hammond with a spring reverb. Now, listen at the difference in the reverb. That's a spring reverb. What I don't want is that amount of level. So on the screen, again, I can take down the, the amount of reverb I'm putting into the wet and dry mix here. So now I've got the sound of maybe a typical Hammond A100 type. Quite a sort of swooshy, swirly sound. Let's go another level, and this time I'll show you a couple of the effect reverb units. So let's presume that we want to go and do a cover song of a famous tune which probably nobody's ever heard of over the years. But the, the actual way the Leslie uh, and the reverb and the dro even the drawbar settings for this were done gave us this kind of sound.
<laughs> anyway, you get the idea. So, uh, you know, the, the, it's all about everybody's individual uh, taste, preferences. What I'm trying to point out to you is that, you know, whatever kind of B3 player you are, whether you're a contemporary player, an entertainer player, a jazz player, a rock player, a gospel player, a funk player, it doesn't really matter because now, with very, very simple, not in-depth edits, but very basic, uh, obvious edits in the screen, you can change and shape the sound of the B3 to be whatever you want. The last thing I want to cover on the B3 Mark II is the use of um, MIDI. And as you can probably notice, on the, on the top of the uh, Hammond, I've got a mic book, and uh, the, the device at the side of it is just a means of me uh, controlling um, the different functions are, are, are on, on the screen. I'm using Logic as an instrument. So basically, if I now bring in Logic, Hey presto, I've got a beautiful Pan Rhodes piano on the bottom of the Hammond. I've assigned the little kick switch on the side of the uh, expression pedal, not only to be slow fast Leslie, but to be sustain as well, or hold. And the thing is, that one of the few things in life that actually blends well with uh, a Hammond sound in, in many styles of music is actually the sound of the Rhodes piano. The two have got a very similar characteristic in depth and, and analog fatness and warmth and uh, again abnormalities and randomization of sound. So if you actually put that in with the sound of the Hammond. discuss this in depth when we go to the XK Pro system because actually the, the MIDI capabilities of the new B3 Mark II is, is exactly the same as the XK3. So rather than dwell on it here, I would like to show you that and if you're interested in that, please watch the Pro system demo and product sort of explanation workshop clinic. But just before, I will just show you one thing. Uh, so you can understand this. If I just press the button here that says external zones, I've got external zone, swell one, swell two, swell three, great one, great two, great three. At the moment I'm actually only using uh, the MIDI channel on great one, but you can transmit out on three independent MIDI channels per manual for upper and lower. And also you can zone the manuals to internal organ, maybe finishing here, and a, a two octave drop, Rhodes piano here. Lots of things you can do um, to make this a usable control keyboard. So not only have you got a superb reproduction of one of the greatest instruments the music industry has ever seen in, in, in recent history, but now you've got something which you can actually use as a working tool in a studio, in ho at home for fun, or on stage, whether you use a mic book or a you know, receptor device or uh, any kind of other hardware uh, outboard MIDI device, the new B3 Mark II can now actually handle this with ease. The last thing I'll say about Hammond, as we started this, you know, the Hammond B3 is the iconic instrument. It is the instrument which everyone aspires to play. But because we offer this technology, which took 10 years to develop, now in, in lower price, more affordable, um, easier to transport products, there is no excuse now for anyone uh, not to be a Hammond player. And if you've watched any of the videos that I've produced over the last two or three years, 
uh, particularly or attended any of the clinics and workshops we do around Europe, the one thing that I always emphasize, and you will see in real time, or have seen in real time if you've met me, that if you want to play a Hammond organ, you have to buy a Hammond organ because no other instrument can offer this kind of tactility, expressiveness, and control. And it speaks for itself. So I urge you, even if you can't afford to buy a B3 just yet, you know, you get around your local dealer, just experience it. And then it actually all falls into place when you start to look at the XK3, the XK Pro system, XK1, XM2. But for the time being, we're going to leave the B3 and move on to another product.